These men get the biggest laughs. I got foreigners from all over the world walking up going, Andy Murphy, f*** you. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 male stand-up comedians. I used to do drugs, I still do, but I used to too. For this list, we've chosen those male comics who defined and refined the art of stand-up comedy. Lucky guy, I got a lot going for me. I'm, I'm healthy, I'm relatively young, I'm white, which thank God for that shit, boy. That is a huge leg up, are you kidding me? Number 10, Louis C.K. Louis C.K. is the biggest name in stand-up today, mastering the balance between quality and quantity. They got their phone, they're like, ugh, it won't... Give it a second! <laughs> Give, it's going to space! After building his rep in the 90s, writing for shows like Late Night with Conan O'Brien, Louis truly found his down-to-earth, razor-sharp comedic voice when he became a father. I walk in the kitchen, she's talking to my wife. She says, uh, Mama, I saw a doggy today. And I was like, really? Where did you see a doggy? And she's like, I'm telling Mama, not you. I'm like, hey, f you. I'm just asking to be nice anyway. Since then, he's dominated and transformed the art form with a stand-up-based TV series and by changing the way people consume comedy. Or you'll meet the perfect person who you love infinitely and you even argue well and you grow together and you have children and then you get old together and then she's gonna die. <laughs> That's the best case scenario. Number nine, Chris Rock. His inauspicious run on Saturday Night Live and middling film career take nothing away from Chris Rock's preeminence as a stand-up. Throughout his HBO specials, he's shown himself to be insightful, brazen, and often the voice of reason in America. $5,000 for a bullet. You know why? Because if a bullet costs $5,000, there'll be no more innocent bystanders. <laughs> Not only is Rock unafraid to tackle political hot potatoes, he also covers romance, music, relationships, and, you guessed it, race, using his sometimes controversial and N-word-laden style. Who's more racist, black people or white people? Black people, you know why? Because we hate black people too. <laughs> Number eight, Eddie Murphy. Mr. T walk up and go, I heard you did some jokes about me. No, you didn't. Maybe I didn't. After decades of barely passable family fare, it's hard to remember how electrifying and hilarious Murphy was in the early 80s. Jump back, wanna kiss myself. Hey! His turn as an SNL star got him noticed, and his film career made him famous, but it's his 1983 concert, Delirious, that showcased the real Eddie Murphy. My father stand up in the middle of the cookout and say, It's my house. <laughs> you know what it is? And if you don't like it, you get the f*** out. Profane, politically incorrect, and full of impersonations, it remains one of the greatest stand-up films ever, made when Murphy was only 22. So look, Steve, I get too much mother flack over this impression. I don't like doing it. I ain't doing the shit no more. Stevie said, when I feel that, I said, shut the f*** up. Number seven, Jerry Seinfeld. Maybe the purest comic on our list, Seinfeld is so proficient an observational comedian, he's now emblematic of the style. Do the people that work in these little shops in the airport have any idea what the prices are every place else in the world? <laughs> yeah, $14 tuna sandwich, we think that's fair. Even without the use of expletives or any particularly racy material, Seinfeld became the top earning comedian in the world, making nothing hilarious and becoming the master of his domain. He may have become a household name as a sitcom star, but he's always carried stand-up comedy in his bones. Women have two types of orgasms, the actual ones and the ones that they make up on their own. And I can give you the male point of view on this, which is we're fine with it. Number six, Robin Williams. Thank you for the standing ovation. You made the orgasm up front. Let's have a cigarette. Let's relax. Juilliard educated and coke-fueled for the first part of his career, Williams ripped his way to the top of the renowned comedy store in the 1970s before breaking big on Mork and Mindy. Oh no, not again. It's nothing serious. It's just the world as we know it is coming to an end. Williams is a virtuoso performer of stream of consciousness banter and impersonations. No one beats Williams' quick wit, improbabilities, and versatility. And because of his wide-ranging themes, no one beats him in universality either. They make porn movies of my movies. They make Goodwill Humping, it's okay. <laughs> Wet dreams may come, all right. Snatch Adams, that was scary. 
Number five, Bill Hicks. Since his career was cut short after his death from pancreatic cancer at age 32, Hicks never reached the heights of the other comedians on this list. Did you know if you play New Kids on the Block albums backwards, they sound better, yeah. <laughs> but his legend and legacy have grown as his social critiques on the stupidity of daily American life have remained relevant. Though his material got him in trouble at times, Hicks is the smart, honest, and nearly forgotten genius of stand-up. By the way, if anyone here is in advertising or marketing, kill yourself. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thanks. Number four, Bill Cosby. While his contemporaries used their soapbox for risque routines, Cosby's accounts of growing up in Philadelphia, marriage, and fatherhood painted a wholesome but hilarious portrait of American life. And my children think that my mother's the most wonderful person on the face of this earth. And I keep telling my children, that's not the same woman I grew up with. Without cursing, using the N-word, or discussing race, Cosby proved universal comedy exists, which is why his TV series are so successful. Who's in trouble now? Theodore. Oh, good, because I thought it was me. Through his stand-up, he became the fatherly voice for the nation that almost no one can impersonate. Well, you don't want to say that to a child, so you censor yourself and you sound like an idiot. So what the... Get your... I'll put a... Get out of my face! Number three, Lenny Bruce. After starting out cleaner, Bruce broke barriers in comedy and ensured the art form was never the same. But guys can have head-on collisions with Greyhound buses, disaster areas, 50 people ain't dead on the highway, on the way to the hospital in the ambulance, the guy makes play for the nurse. She goes, how can you do a thing at a time like that? I got hot. His act combined sex, politics, and religion at a time when sex, politics, and religion were not fit topics for mixed company. The result was a lifetime of legal troubles for Bruce, with several charges of obscenity. But his legacy paved the way for the next comedians on this list. Catholic, asshole, shit, uh, uh, let's see, the, uh, in, in the park, and, uh, and the tits and shit, and uh, uh, Catholics and the Jews and shit. That's about all I remember. It's, uh, uh, that's about the general tenor of the act. Number two, Richard Pryor. Pryor was a prophet. He translated personal experience into deep truths about the human condition and reached a wide audience with his profane and colorful examinations of race and racism. You ever notice how nice white people get when there's a bunch of <laughs> around? <laughs> right, they get outside, they stalk to everybody, right? They say, hi, how you doing? I don't know you, but here's my wife, hello! By, as Bill Cosby once said, drawing the line between comedy and tragedy as thin as one could possibly paint it, Pryor became both a counterculture icon and a mainstream success, who influenced all who followed. Women get their heart broke, they cry. Men don't do that shit. Men hold that shit in like it don't hurt. Walk around and get hit by trucks. <laughs> say, didn't he see that truck? He said, motherfucker, he wouldn't have seen a 747. Number one, George Carlin. If Bill Cosby is the fatherly voice of America, George Carlin was the bristly uncle. My job is thinking up goofy shit. <laughs> Pryor was a prophet, but Carlin was a workhorse, scrapping an hour of material every year to start from scratch. Quite the accomplishment, considering his career spanned over 50 years. You don't want to be sitting in your doctor's office and hear this. Well, Jim, there's no reason why you shouldn't live another 20 to 30 years. However, you will be bleeding constantly from both eyes. Another comic who pushed the envelope far past its breaking point, Carlin made dissecting language, the status quo, and everyday life his profession, and became the ultimate stand-up comedian in the process. It's called the American dream, because you have to be asleep to believe it. Do you agree or disagree with our list? That shit ain't funny, mother which stand-up comedian would be in your top ten? That's the story of my life. No respect. That'll get no respect at all. You put no respect at all. Be sure to let us know and subscribe to WatchMojo.com for more great top tens. I'm not into that one-night thing. I think a person should get to know someone and even be in love with them before you use and degrade them. <laughs> <laughs>